Hello and welcome to Current Issues with me Tarun. The heart of Asia Conference declaration has made it clear as to how Pakistan based terror groups spread terror in India and Afghanistan. It is known that Pakistan is a safe haven and a source of terror. The declaration adopted at 6 Heart of Asia Conference mentions two terror groups targeting India, the Lashkar-e-Taiba and Jaish-e-Mohammed. In addition to the Haqqani network which are responsible for causing high level of violence in Afghanistan the declaration calls for concerted regional and international cooperation to ensure elimination of terrorism in all forms and manifestations including dismantling of the terrorist sanctuaries and safe havens in the heart of asia region as well as disrupting all financial tactical and logistical support for terrorism Prime Minister Modi called for action against terrorists and those who support, shelter, train and finance them. Silence and inaction against terrorism in Afghanistan and our region will only embolden terrorists and their masters, he said. We discussed this issue today with Ambassador Ashok Sajanhar who joins me in the studio and Colonel Singh. Uh, I'll go across to Ambassador Ashok Sajanhar. So I want to ask you, you've uh, read out the statement put out at the Heart of Asia conference. uh what would be your initial comments on the statement i think it's a very strong statement it's a very powerful statement it could also possibly be said that what india was not able to get at the brics uh, summit about one and a half months ago in goa i think we have more than adequately made up for that because uh, there is reference both to jaish e mohammed there is reference to lashkar e taiba there is also reference to haqqani network you know these are the three uh, terrorist groups which have been wreaking havoc uh, both in india and in afghanistan and we were not able to do that uh, there was also mention there's mention in this declaration of taking action not only against the terrorist groups but also against those who are providing sanctuaries uh, the prime minister was very categorical when he said that uh, words are not enough we have spoken uh, much on these issues already but uh, now is the time for bold and decisive action because uh, no action would really mean uh, it would further embolden the terrorists to continue with their activities and also their masters who are providing them Taking support. Taking on for them Ashok Ambassador Sajan are indicated that bold and decisive action please see this news report and then I'll come back to Colonel Singh for his comments on this issue. Terrorism emanating from Pakistan was one of the central issues at the Heart of Asia conference with India and Afghanistan seeking to corner Pakistan on the issue of terrorism. Representatives of nearly 2 dozen countries met to promote Afghan peace efforts. Without naming Pakistan, both Indian and Afghan ministers urged their neighbor to stop offering shelter and support to militants who commit violence in the region. The declaration recognizes terrorism as the biggest threat to peace and stability and demands immediate end to all forms of terrorism and all support financing safe havens and sanctuaries to it. For the first time a heart of Asia declaration expressed concern at the violence caused in Afghanistan and the region by terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda, Daesh, Lashkar-e-Taiba and Jaish-e-Mohammed etc. we also see in our region the very difficult problem of terrorism and violent extremism we also see the problem of state nurturing and flirting with terrorism uh, which obviously not only has consequences for them for themselves but also consequences uh, for the region as a whole however the question is will pakistan listen because once afghanistan becomes secure and stable it will demand the return of its territories particularly waziristan and this is something pakistan will not easily allow but what is certain is that the pressure from the international community against pakistan will grow in the coming days i'm going across to colonel jayban singh and i want to ask him this question colonel singh can you hear me yeah yeah i can Colonel Singh, if you could see, Afghanistan president was very scathing when he rejected Pakistan's aid offer of 500 million dollars and said, "You're better off 
controlling terror in your own land and aiding and abetting terror in Afghanistan, which is causing a large number of civilian casualties and they have in fact skyrocketed this year. Do you think this is a befitting snap to Pakistan and what it does? Uh, look, uh, uh, the Heart of Asia uh, initiative is basically a diplomatic initiative and to that extent you have a very learned uh, person in the form of my co-panelist to uh, speak about it. I will just give you my perception as a common man and as a security expert. The way I looked at it when I saw this uh, statement coming from the President of Afghanistan, it showed a very deep sense of concern for his own country. We have to realize that the Heart of Asia Conference is basically meant to ensure the peace and prosperity of Afghanistan because Afghanistan is a pivot in, the, in this region. And uh, the President of Afghanistan has very clearly said that this peace and prosperity cannot come by till such time that the export of terror from Pakistan to Afghanistan does not stop. And in this, he has been given full support by India because India is also suffering the same kind of terror uh, on its own borders and in its own border states as Afghanistan is suffering because of Pakistan's uh, obduracy, its stubbornness. Pakistan is simply not ready to uh, read the writing of the wall and, uh, you know, sort of think out of box to other means by which it can secure its uh, national interest, whatever it feels that it is. Okay. I and take now the whole world is getting <laughs> after them to change their uh, perception and to come into the mainstream where peace and prosperity becomes a reality. Okay, I'm Whether going... Pakistan will do this or they will not do it, we will have to see in the future. But uh, having seen Pakistan for so many years, I feel that uh, the chances of their relenting are very less. Chances of relenting are less. I'm going across to Ambassador Sajanar. Ambassador Sajanar read out this statement to you, which was made by the Afghan president. Uh, he said it very succinctly. He put it that this fund, Mr. Aziz, could very well be used for containing extremism because without peace, any amount of assistance will not meet the needs of our people. Do you think President Ghani is also very pained at the double scheme of Pakistan? It's aiding, aiding and abetting terror, terror in Afghanistan and then doing this double scheme of developmental aid. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I think this very uh, well illustrates <clears throat> Sorry, the frustration that uh, President Ghani is feeling. Uh, you know, you would recall it's not too long ago, it was in September 2014, so that's just about two years ago when President Ghani was elected to this position and uh, he put all, so to say, his eggs in the basket of Pakistan. He reached out to Pakistan and he thought that if he had a good working equation and relationship with the Pakistan army, then they would stop the support to terrorists. And when his first visit was to Pakistan, <clears throat> even before meeting the government officials, he traveled to Rawalpindi and he called on uh, the general, Rahil Sharif, basically reaching out to him. So he went out of his way beyond all calls of protocol. <clears throat> Sorry. And so uh, over the last two years, this has uh, all his hopes and expectations have been shattered, they have been belied. And so he has uh, come to this position when he has said that, uh, you know, you can keep your $500 million with you and uh, use them to stop terrorism. And also another very pertinent and very telling point that he made was that a very senior Taliban uh, uh, a functionary, a very senior Taliban uh, commander has said that Taliban would not be able to last for a month if they were not given support and sanctuary in Pakistan. That's a very... And that is a, a huge condemnation because uh, Pakistan keeps on going around saying that these are non-state actors, we don't have any control, we ourselves are victims of terrorism. But of course, you know, they don't take any action against uh, those groups which are acting against Afghanistan and those groups which are acting against India actually they are supporting they are helping they are training they are funding they are financing they are providing sanctuaries to them so this is what uh, uh, President Ghani mentioned 
that if Pakistan were to stop providing support and sanctuaries, then uh, they would not be able to launch such attacks against civilians, against economic assets, against army uh, uh, Afghan national security forces and, and they would be able to bring peace. Taking on for their ladies and gentlemen, as we see Afghanistan <coughs> has actually exposed Pakistan for what it is, a state, a nation that does double speak, that on the one hand is, 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 is saying that okay, we'll give you funds for development, but on the other hand is using the Haqqani network, A on the other end, it is you also aiding and abetting Taliban and also using Jaisi Muhammad and other terror groups to spread terror in Afghanistan. Uh, I'll go across to Colonel Jaiban Singh. Do you think at the heart of Asia conference, now Pakistan stands cornered because it's double speak on Afghanistan stand exposed on one end and towards India, what it has been doing for the past two, two and a half decades, everybody knows. Do you think that this is truly a movement where Pakistan is exposed before the international community, Colonel Singh? I absolutely agree with you, but uh, I also feel that Pakistan has been exposed a long time back. And the double speak that Pakistan does is known to the entire world. But there have been certain reasons why certain big powers have not uh, wanted to take any action against Pakistan because they have a vested interest uh, because of its location and the kind of uh, support that it is giving to some people. But what we have to learn, India has to learn from here, from the very courageous statement that uh, President Ghani has made, that we cannot take it lying down anymore. And we have to be proactive. To that extent, the policy which is being followed by Prime Minister Modi and the uh, government uh, stands vindicated. That we simply have to call, the, call a spade a spade and not go in and get moved by the double speak of Pakistan which has kept us in a situation of dormancy for so many years. Now is the time for us to, to uh, integrate our uh, action with Afghanistan and also with all the other countries in Asia and the rest of the world in order to ensure that Pakistan is forced into a corner and it changes its policies. Uh, it is not very difficult for Pakistan to change its policies. The problem is that Pakistan does not want to do it. It, it, it has stuck itself into a box for no rhyme or reason. Okay. And should it try to come out of it, should, should, should the politics or somebody tell the army that uh, think of some better way of uh, saving yourself, I think it would be a better idea. Okay, okay. It, it, so Pakistan is what truly it is a state that survives on terrorism, that exports terrorism. I think that being its principal export. But now I'm going across to a statement and talking about a statement which was made by Prime Minister Modi and I'll request uh, Ambassador Sajana to speak on that. Prime Minister Modi said he called for action against terrorists and those who support, shelter, train and finance them. Silence and inaction against terrorism in Afghanistan and our region will only embolden terrorists and their masters. Ambassador Sajana, you've been in those positions. Could you share with us the importance of such a statement made by the Prime Minister of India? You know, India has taken up the issue of terrorism and cornering Pakistan for quite some time now because India has been a victim of terrorist attacks that have been launched from across the border by groups that have been receiving the support of uh, uh, Pakistan agencies, Pakistan Army, ISI and the others. So if we go back a little in uh, time, whether it was the G20 session in China when also the Prime Minister took it up at a, a senior level in his bilateral meetings with all the presidents, whether it was at uh, the uh, East Asia summit in uh, Laos in Vientiane or at the other summits in, uh, uh, at the BRICS summit in Goa, at the BRICS uh, BIMSTEC reach out in Goa. So at all these uh, fora, the Prime Minister has been taking out. And what I would say is that the culmination that we have seen in terms of the strongest declaration emanating out of all these conferences is, is in the heart of Asia context. And that, uh, you know, as uh, my uh, distinguished and esteemed uh, co-panelist has said, the basic objective of the heart of Asia is to ensure and promote stability, security, peace and prosperity in Afghanistan. And it has been very clearly brought out that without a stop to the terror from, uh, emanating from Pakistan, it will not be possible to do this. And uh, what Prime Minister Modi has said is that the international community 
needs to continue to be engaged in this and to translate its words into action by ensuring that there are no sanctuaries provided, by ensuring that there is a decisive action that is taken against. And I think it should uh, result in uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, effect on Pakistan because uh, uh, Pakistan stands exposed. Even uh, five years ago when Osama bin Laden was killed uh, uh, in Abbottabad. So Pakistan stands exposed. But I think the change that is happening is that within Pakistan now, and particularly after these statements and the surgical strikes on the 29th of September, people within Pakistan have started questioning the logic and the rationale of supporting Jaisha Muhammad lashkar e taiba so that Pakistan is getting humiliated across the board, whether it is in the United Nations General Assembly session or elsewhere, the intelligentsia, the intellectuals and the common people, it's only the army and the ISI, the spy agency, which are supporting these, uh, which are in support of this because of reasons we can discuss that if you would like a little later. But uh, I think across the board, uh, the Prime Minister's statement in Kozikode, if you remember, when he reached out directly to the Pakistan people, saying that, is this what uh, you would like to do? Wouldn't you like to fight against poverty? Let us join together and fight against poverty and bring prosperity. So, 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 so in a sense, if, if I take Ambassador Sajjanar's mm -hmm. statement, Pakistan has got not exposed once, but many times. And, and in this context, now the Afghan president in an interview, he made it clear that one of our corps commanders from Helmand went to Quetta in Pakistan and offered to show the commander that where the houses of the Taliban leadership are in Pakistan. But Pakistan refused to act. Colonel Singh, if you could share with us, now the Afghan president himself says that they, they gave information to Pakistan that this is where Pakistan is sheltering the Taliban in Quetta, but Pakistan refused to act. Do you think that with Afghanistan also toughening its tanks, the days for Pakistan's double speak are truly over at the world stage and what would follow in the coming days? What you feel would follow after this declaration? I feel that the time to just uh, say uh, strong words is long since over and now is the time to act. And how we have to act is that on the eastern border of Pakistan, which it shares with India, we have to strengthen our border management and also punish Pakistan for any kind of a misadventure that it does as we did by the surgical strikes. Beyond this, we have to have a very close cooperation with Afghanistan in fighting this uh, matter of terror and uh, uh, sponsored terror as a whole. We have given to Pakistan a couple of gunships, but that is not enough. Pa uh, sorry, Afghanistan. And Afghanistan needs to be given certain amount of advice and uh, training as far as their uh, army is concerned and their, uh, their counter-terrorist postures are concerned. So India should increase the, its involvement in uh, Afghanistan, in helping Afghanistan to build up uh, its capacity to fight this kind of export of terror from Pakistan. To that extent, if certain advisors are sent to Afghanistan, or even if certain troops are sent over there to uh, assist, I don't think it would be a very bad idea. So it is in this kind of a very dynamic thought process that we have to do, along with, of course, uh, diplomatically isolating Pakistan, uh, in order to ensure that the cost of this export of terror on both sides of its border, it becomes so much that at the end, the Pakistan army has to relent. Because whatever you may say to the people, Till such time that we do not control the Pakistan army, this problem is not going to finish. Okay, okay. But I'll go across to uh, Ambassador Sajanar. Ambassador Sajanar, if you see, President Ghani has welcomed the helicopters the government of India has supplied to Afghanistan and also helped in maintaining them. Uh, they say that India's help has been invaluable. Do you see a strategic alliance now happening between India and Afghanistan? We also built their parliament. The Indian PWD did it. How do you see this happening? I think it's a very good move. Uh, the strategic partnership uh, with Afghanistan was the first one that India had signed. India and Afghanistan was the first partnership that uh, Afghanistan had entered into. Uh, of course, uh, with uh, Hamid Karzai, this was moving well, this was moving strongly. Uh, after Ashraf Ghani came, then of, you know it took a little, uh, for Why? the initial months, it was uh, weakened a little bit. But now I think it has turned one full circle or it has turned 180 degrees, it has come back to the situation in terms of our engagement and partnership that we had with uh, 
uh, with uh, President Hamid Karzai. As you said very rightly, first the parliament building, before that there was the Pule Khumri transmission line and the power station, before that there was the Zaranj Delaram road which is also a very, very uh, big infrastructural project which is very vital. And then most recently when the Prime Minister went earlier this year to dedicate the what was known as the Salma or the Afghanistan India friendship dam to Afghanistan. So there are a large number of infrastructure projects that have been done by. But uh, as has been said, I think uh, these four MI-25 military attack helicopters have been extremely useful both uh, uh, literally and symbolically that India is willing to help uh, Afghanistan literally. in defending itself. And uh, these are the three helicopters which had gone earlier and the last helicopter which was delivered days before the Heart of Asia conference. All of them acquitted themselves extremely creditably when uh, Afghanistan was uh, attacked by the Taliban and uh, the important strategic uh, uh, city, uh, town of Kunduz in North Afghanistan was taken and then MI-25 helicopters came in, in uh, to the help of the uh, Afghan National Security Forces in wresting that back from Taliban. So there has been now a request for more arms, ammunition, equipment. Uh, from Afghanistan to India and I think India should take uh, uh, positive action, quick action, prompt action in supplying Afghanistan with this equipment because uh, the peace, the security and the prosperity of India is inextricably linked with the peace and security of Afghanistan okay. and uh, not only us for Central Asia also. So I think all of us need to work together, need to collaborate okay. and cooperate in uh, providing security and of course you know uh, said I know the time is uh, limited but the other important issue in addition to terrorism and security was the issue of connectivity that was discussed at the heart of Asia conference and you know both these are uh, interlinked and uh, juxtaposed because without peace you cannot have development and without peace you cannot have uh, uh, growth to provide a decent uh, uh, living standard of living to the people of Afghanistan okay. and that was another aspect that was uh, uh, brought under uh, very sharp focus by uh, Prime Minister Modi in his uh, statements okay, and, and we have of course India has of course contributed a great deal in the social uh, infrastructure education health and physical infrastructure building this in Afghanistan taking on from there I'm going across to Colonel Singh Colonel Singh if you could share with us two mm -hmm. things Pakistan has continued its attacks on India despite being exposed again and again, again. Recently, there was an attack in Kashmir. Do you think there is an inherent problem that the whole state of Pakistan owes its existing to exporting terror and there will be a lot of domestic, what you can say, revolutions or there will be some civil war kind of a situation if it stops this they are our enemy syndrome wherein which you know India remains a constant enemy and India being an enemy actually they owe their existence to this propaganda that happens in Pakistan. Do you think this is a psychological warfare also to keep their own people in check? Yeah, I think that this is not something that the government of Pakistan or the politicians of Pakistan want and it is definitely not what the people of Pakistan want. And if they think that the India is out to threaten them and to finish them off, I think they are uh, absolutely wrong in their assessment. If there is any enemy in Pakistan, it is the, uh, the army, the army of Pakistan, which is the enemy of the people of Pakistan. So, so therefore, uh, the people of uh, Pakistan have to realize that this is the time, I mean, what the army has done in the last 60 years, six odd, odd decades, has not given them anything. It has not given them the security. It has not helped them in any way. And India has never gone to attack them, even at the time when the army was at its weakest, when uh, there was this war going on in Afghanistan and most of the forces had been shifted from the eastern border to the western border, India did not do anything to spoil the security paradigm in Pakistan. So that was a very, very good uh, example that we are not interested in a weak Pakistan. In fact, we are interested in a very strong uh, Pakistan as our neighbor. Okay, Ambassador Sajanar wants so to come in. Working, we want to work towards it, but there are certain people over there who do not want us to work. Certain people, people including Pakistan Raval Army. Pindi, the bosses the in Pakistan Raval Army Pindi don't want it to happen. To I have, have, have Ambassador Sajanar also wanted the, to come in on this. The country, if it does not stop this anti-India thing. 
Okay. Ambassador Sajanar, your comment on this? Yeah, my comment on this would be, you know, as has been very rightly said uh, by my co-panelist, you know, it is not India and I think people, those who are uh, thoughtful people and those who are policy makers also, they realize that the uh, enemy in Pakistan is not India. The enemy in Pakistan is uh, the terror that they themselves have given rise to. You know, the, let me quote the statement that had been made by Hillary Clinton some years ago when she was on a visit to Islamabad and she said that if you rear snakes in your backyard, don't be under the impression that they will go and uh, bite only your neighbors. They are going to come and bite you also. And in that context, you know, the number of terrorist attacks that we see in Pakistan, whether it was in the Peshawar Army School in December 2014, in which hmm. more than 140 children were killed, or across the board. So, you know, while they are supporting uh, terrorist groups which take action against in India and in Afghanistan, they themselves are also being hit by these terror groups. And it is basically the army and the ISI which portrays India as the enemy. And I think we need to recognize also that the clout, that the standing, that the uh, prestige of the Pakistan army in Pakistan is very high because after the Peshawar attack, you know, the Zarbe Azb uh, uh, initiative uh, program that they launched, they said that it had been highly successful, although this is a moot point, we can have a discussion on that. But that having been said, the prestige and the profile and the clout of the army is very high today. I think what really needs to be done is that a recognition in the army the, and the spy agency that uh, by targeting India, uh, they will not be able to meet their own uh, interests. They will taking not on be able for them, to. By taking on, by targeting India, they're not going to meet any of their targets. It's a self-perpetuating institution that is ruling by, by creating imaginary enemies, one being India. Uh, that's a wrap for the show today. But for more information, you can click on our website, www.newsworldindia.in. Also, you can tweet us a views on at the rate News World India in. You can also like us on our Facebook for broader views. Keep watching Current Issues at 5 p.m. from Monday to Friday only on News World India. Thank you so much for joining us today.